Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the basics of titrations. Being able to, I want you to be able to describe the purpose and also calculate a basic titration at the end of today's video. So let's talk about some of this key vocab here. What is a titration? Well, titration in chemistry is something relatively simple. Okay? It is a method of determining the concentration of an unknown acid or base solution using an indicator. Now, you can do titrations with lots of different things. Okay? You can determine the amount of vitamin C that's in a fruit. You can actually even not even just use it for acids and bases, even though it's what we mainly do it on, in, advanced, in chemistry. Okay? We, you can also detect different amounts of metals, like iron that's present in water, or mercury that might be present in, some, in a piece of fish okay, that, you're trying, that you don't want to get poisoned from. And even in some cases, it can help detect viral loads in different samples. So you can test the amount of different diseases and, and viruses that are present in water uh, using a titration. Okay? So the way this works is very straightforward. Okay? You have to have a some kind of unknown acid. Okay? So for example here, I've got some hydrochloric acid, okay? and I am react and I am placed some of this unknown hydrochloric acid into my little dish here. Okay? This I do not know this chemical's concentration. Okay? In order to help me out here, I need some kind of indicator. Okay? And that indicator is going to be in this case phenolphthalein. Okay, phenolphthalein is one that we've used before. It's very helpful when measuring acids and bases reacting. Okay? And the base that I'm going to react this with is some uh, sodium hydroxide. Okay? And we know that when I place my indicator phenolphthalein into acid, it stays clear in an acid. However, as I add base, okay, you will see pink starting to form. And now you notice that as the drop, as my drop goes down, we see a nice splash of pink. Okay, that is that base reacting with the indicator. But then, as I swirl it around, the indicator is react. The indicator is no longer pink because the acid and the base are neutralizing each other. And we are reaching a point here where I am measuring this out carefully. Now I'm doing this right now by pipette, but most of the time a chemist would use a device called a burette to help us find this. If you want to see what a burette looks like, you can take a look at the video in the description where they talk about how we can accurately measure the solution of a chemical using a burette. Okay? But let's say I'm adding drop by drop by drop here. And you'll notice that I'm getting my pinks to start to last a little longer. That tells me that the acid and the base are reacting more slowly now. Okay? That tells me that most of the acid is starting to be gone. Okay? And I am very soon going to be at what's called the equivalence point. Okay? The, or, uh, the equivalence point in a titration is very simply... Whoop, whoop, when the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base. And how do I know once I've reached the equivalence point? Well, I nicely chose an indicator that has an endpoint that is at the same pH as my equivalence point. So in the case of my acid and my base here, they will react and be equal to each other at pH 7. And that is the endpoint of the indicator phenolphthalein, which is perfect. And not all indicators are good for every titration. My goal here is to not add too much base. And notice, oh, look how long that base is staying there now, right? That pink is staying longer and longer and longer, but it's gone again now. So I'm going to add a little more, and we're going to see. All right, notice how that pink is staying now? That tells me that I have reached a point in my titration where my acids and my bases are equal to each other. Now, this kind of dark pink, even though it was about one drop, is actually usually a sign that a titration has gone wrong. I have over titrated. I have gone past my equivalence point. Ideally, I would want to have a titration that looks a little bit more like this. Okay, This is a very, very pale pink. So pale it doesn't even really show up on the camera so much. Okay, when we have a nice pale pink, that is a sign the titration has gone nicely and that we are basically at that perfect equivalence point. I am a little too far on here. Okay? Now, if I had had a burette, you can actually direct those a lot slower so you can get a nice uh, light, light pink color. Okay? More like this guy where it is perfect in between. Okay? Now, let's take a look at some of the basic calculations that we can do with this. Okay? So let's say, for example, I have a unknown 
uh, a, an, like basically the same setup we just had there, right? Where I have an unknown concentration of HCl. Hey, let's, I started with 10 mils in my little dish here. Hey, and I added 7.5 milliliters of two molar NaOH. And then my question is gonna be then, well, hey, what is the concentration of this HCl? Hey, you have a couple different steps that you need to take in order to figure this out. Hey, the first step is to write the reaction between an acid and a base. Good thing we've been practicing writing our acid reactions. Hey, so HCl plus NaOH is gonna make water and our salt, which in this case is literally table salt. Okay. Now, I have my reaction written. What I need to do is use what I know, right? We know the concentration and we know the, mo the volume of our NaOH. Using that, I can find my moles of my NaOH. So, that becomes very simple if Mr. Bartlett can find the right piece here. Here we go. We know that two molar NaOH is equal to X amount of moles of NaOH over that 0.0075 liters. Make sure you convert that to liters and to work with our equation. Okay. So you do your math, right? You multiply out that 0 0.0075 and you get a moles of 0 0.015 moles of NaOH. Okay. Now, I don't want my moles of NaOH though. I'm trying to find my information about my HCl. Thankfully though, we have this nice balanced reaction. So I can convert my moles of NaOH into moles of HCl with it in this case being a one to one ratio. Now, not all reactions will have a one to one ratio. So you will need to consider that as part of your problem. Okay. So in this case, we're gonna end up with the same amount of moles of NaOH and the same amount of moles of HCl. Okay. Now in our final step, we need to use our information we found here to find our molarity of our acid. Okay, so we do not know the molarity of our acid, but we can divide the moles that we found in part C by the volume of HCl that we use. In this case, I'm going to 10 milliliters. Careful, a lot of chemistry students would go back and use the 7.5 again, but that was for the NaOH. If I wanna know the HCl, I'm gonna use the HCl's information. And that would give me a final answer here of 1.5 molar HCl. So I'm able to identify my unknown solutions concentration by just knowing how much NaOH I added. And this is an example of a simple titration problem that you guys will take a look in your homework. But if you have any questions, don't forget to email and contact me and come in and check us out to make sure that you're feeling confident with problems like these. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.